G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Luger. The Luger PO8 is a German-designed pistol that has seen service during the First World War, the Second World War, and now in the Fallout universe, the Third World War. So this thing's been through quite a lot, although for the third one, it probably got to sit out because, well, all of the fighting was done with nuclear warhead-tipped missiles. So, yeah, you know, you, you go through two wars, you get to sit the third one out. That seems fair enough to me. Um, my question is why Germany kept producing these things, or... If they weren't kept producing these, how in the hell do these things still exist 200 goddamn years after the war? Did did Nina over here just go and raid a museum and thought, yeah, yeah, that, that'll be good, let's grab that. Who knows? This thing fires 9mm rounds, you get this using, um, you just loot it from dudes who are shooting you with it, so I guess everyone's pinching stuff out of museums these days. Or you can find it in shops too. The ammo itself can't be created on a workbench, unfortunately, so you're going to have to shop around for it. Let's get into the attachments. Now, I mentioned the Deliverer before, and if I didn't, I'm an idiot, but um, we've got the same sort of uh, attachment set up for the uh, nice proc of the um, Deliverer in terms of receiver, so that's pretty good, but it starts getting a little bit different when it comes to the barrels. Right now, we've got a short barrel. You can put a snub nose on it, I guess. It'll make it slightly better in VATS, but there's no accuracy or range penalty. In fact, the uh, ported snub nose barrel gives you better accuracy than a standard short barrel. Obviously, there's a ported version of that for superior recoil control, which is nice. The artillery barrel allows you to mount sights on it that aren't just the basic or the glow sights, which we'll get to in a second. And the long ported barrel doesn't allow you to do that, but it gives you a similar stats. It gives you slightly better accuracy at the cost of customization options. The suppressed barrel um, is a thing which um, you can utilize because this thing doesn't actually have a muzzle slot. So if you want to use a suppressor, you've got to actually have the barrel swap to it. Now, the modder discussed this on the mod page. Basically, he wanted to say that, well, if you want to use a suppressed version, you're going to have to give up a lot of range. And we do give up quite a lot of range. But here's the thing. Um, with suppressed weapons, sure, you might get that lower range and accuracy at range in VATS. But if you're hitting with a 4.4 times multiplier, you're always going to be out-damaging what you'd get normally um, if you're getting the 50%, um, I guess, multiplier or you know 50% penalty at range than you would with these things because the multiplier of the sneak criticals is so high. So there's no reason not to use the suppressed barrel, but we'll go ahead and grab the artillery barrels just to show you what kind of customization options you are granted from this. The polymer grip just gives you the uh, best recoil here for accuracy. Also reduces weight, but not compared to the standard grip, just to the comfort grip. That's kind of interesting. We'll move on. Got a standard magazine or a snail magazine. This is basically the drum that the stum tropping blokes used during the Second World War, uh, the First World War, sorry, as you know the German shock troopers uh, back in the day. But since the uh, modder doesn't actually have access to use the snail magazine asset, it's just completely invisible. You do get the um, real life accurate uh, 32 rounds in the drum though, so that's helpful. We'll leave this at standard for now. And we'll go to the sights. You can have glow sights, which actually extend the barrel out a little bit, which is kind of interesting. There's nothing to line that up with at the back here. You just go from there, which would be you know, hard to use in VR. But luckily, the character knows exactly where the center of the screen is at all times. So isn't that helpful? The artillery sights add a little bit of this. You can't change the elevation or anything. I guess that's just a little bit of greebling. In terms of how it looks like, I think this is a much better iron sight setup than the standard iron sights that you've got at the back here got a ray flag sight so that's pretty good you just get a, a, a standard dot and the short scope and recon scope obviously this one tracks targets but they are both of the um, see-through scopes which means this thing requires that mod it also requires the browning nine millimeter high power mod so there's a little bit of stuff you need to get to get this thing to work and whether it's worth it is up to you um, we'll keep the reflex sights for now we've got a legendary effect if you want to chuck that on and we've got some colors we can paint it in. So you can have it black, brass, black with brass parts, metal, metal with brass parts, chrome, chrome with gold parts, gold, and gold with chrome parts. Yep. That's the customization options there. Let's go for metal for here. And we'll grab another couple of Lugers with uh, maybe suppressed barrels and maybe a legendary effect. We'll see how we go. Okay, so here we are in the sunset version of Gunners Plaza, and this is what the Luger looks like in first person. Note the weapon drawing animations involves you flipping down the uh, safety there, and you actually grab the safety um, 
You can barely see it, but it pulls down the safety uh, on the slide there, which is some nice attention to detail. And that's what the reflex sights look like. They look like they're a little bit misaligned, but that's fine. If we happen, if they do happen to be misaligned, we can use them. We can use the uh, box that we get when we aim at stuff for pacification to help our aim. And we'll just quickly take a look at these things in the old third person. And I've got a gold one. It's got the furious legendary effect. It looks kind of kooky, but you know, it's a golden eye reference, even though the golden gun probably wasn't Luger. Anyways. Let's get started on these gunners here. We'll go for the sneaky, stealthy approach at first. But if we happen to get spotted, I guess it's time to uh, use ye old uh, unsuppressed variants of this. And so we are getting the 4.4 times multipliers, hitting them for about 200. So that's pretty good. But if we're not, we're getting 50 damage. And luckily, we do have stuff like Ace Operator. That's another thing that I didn't mention before, which is potentially beneficial to a suppressor user. But yeah, extremely powerful perk, and all you have to do, all you have to sacrifice to get it is uh, Preston hating you. But if you want to get his perk before you do the Nuka World thing and get all those things, that's probably the best course of action. Because if he hates you, I don't believe you lose the perk. You can actually hear that it's using the uh, Browning 9 9mm high power animations to reload, but enough of the suppressed stuff, let's go to the loud and proud stuff. Just making those animation... I might have, um, deliver a sound replaces on right now that makes it sound a little bit different, but it's still making it fresh either way. And is that an MG42, my man? Because, uh... You have to put that down. Everyone's grabbing German weapons. Yeah, that's definitely an MG42. I've knocked it out of his hand. That's the thing that um, you can do with uh, the gunslingers. So very, very helpful and uh, good weapon. See, there's a lot of ways that um, Fallout 4 can make pistols to an extent end game tier weapons. Especially if you're playing in survival where you can, you've only got, what, a 25% damage uh, penalty. But you can get... 50% more damage using something like um, adrenaline to boost your damage, provide you kill enough things. You have got a staggering weapon. Or is it, is it a deagle? What do you got there? You got a deagle. Put that down right now. I'm going to crit you in the face until you die. That's totally a deagle. I don't think she was the one staggering me. It's the bloke uh, standing behind her. Eh, I'll go one more critical. Why not, eh? There we go. A satisfying head explosion there. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. I'm gonna make you stagger and said, see how much you like it. Hey? Yeah, not a fair. A two shot? What's going on there? Alright, time to bring out the gold one. Enter the uh, furious legendary effect. Not available in any firearms except for splatter cannon, obviously, end game DLC weapon there, but still. I feel like we're going to need that 50% multiplicative uh, damage per shot here. Because, uh, you know, it doesn't seem to be doing the best damage. And like I said before, we are playing on very hard difficulty, so we're getting a big old damage penalty to our name. But that's fine. We'll keep on going regardless. We'll just uh, use the uh, gold one for the rest of this little combat thing. I went in this room for no reason at all. Must have uh, drawn her down when I... Um, Cleared out the uh, middle section there. We're back into caution now, which means we might be able to score a cheap headshot. A cheap critical. Not quite. Now, it's very important if you're using a furious weapon to always target the same guy. Because you don't want your stacks resetting. Like that. On that fella. Alright, I'll switch over to the this one now because we'll have Ace Operator to give us slightly better damage. And we'll spam the trigger, try to get those headshots to maximize DPS. Yeah, this weapon is kind of awkward now because I'm just kind of standing there shooting them. This is kind of the DPS that... It's not good because it just completely stalls the flow of the game and not the modder's fault. It's just because I'm playing on a bullshit difficulty setting. But imagine that all the time in Fallout 76 and people ask me, Why are you producing Fallout 76 anymore? Because of that. Fuck that. Let's get concentrated fire, do the thing. Ah, look, the sneak criticals came and immediately killed him. Nice. 
Let's uh, quickly finish off this last turret. If we haven't killed it already. No, we have. Alright, so that was pretty good. Um, didn't do too well against the fully armored gunners when we're not hitting them with snake criticals. But, I mean, it's a pistol, right? So you can't expect the world out of it. And we are playing on a bullshit difficulty. So we'll move on. Okay, so the invisible snail magazine has been inserted into this because I will just want to maximize my DPS without having to stop to reload every few bullets. We don't, we just don't worry about the uh, invisible magazine. Here's the target, and we've got a lot of shots to put out on him, and it's during the night, so we should be okay. But, you know, if this goes bad, what I'll do is I'll just whip out my furious one, and we can watch the damage stack multiplicatively until it kills him. There we go, we're gonna get those headshots up close, mate. They did make... Maybe I was being a little bit overzealous when I said that... Actually, nah. Sure, this thing has, you know, terrible range and everything, but the suppressor at close range is going to make this extremely powerful. And we're just sneaking from him very effectively right now, and we just gotta make sure we stay away from him at this point. If we break his pathing, it should be easy enough. He's fairly accurate when it comes to his blind firing uh, sonic ear rape screams, and god, it's a horrible sound hearing many of these lapping over each other. I had that during a stream once. Yeah, this is one of the uh, stream killers here. It's one of the ones that I die on and take like 15 minutes to finally kill, but that's okay. I, I figured out how to do it normally. Um, under normal circumstances, if I was playing alone, I'd just grab a stealth boy and a, a Calmax and like a super sledge or something or yeah or a combat knife and just chop them all up using big leagues for and sneak criticals because you can get a 10 times sneak multiplier 12 times if you've got deacon's perk to kill everything but it looks like i've got this one without really breaking a sweat so i guess we'll just do that furious thing <laughs> on the next thing we fight provided we can kill this thing quick enough what i might do is just try to finish this off in bats a little bit I was going to say to replenish my criticals, but no. I didn't use any criticals last time, but... There we go. That's kind of weird how we weren't hitting for 400 there. I could have sworn we were hitting for 400 in some spots, but we weren't. Is the head not the weak spot? I'm fairly certain it is. Also, what did you drop for me? Ghoul Slayer. Yeah, you can keep that, mate. You'll need it in the afterlife. Let's move on. Okay, time to fight the giant T-posing robot. Don't think I didn't see that one, Todd. Righto. If, as soon as we can scope it in vats, we'll just start shooting. We get a fairly decent amount of shots. We'll just uh, go for a critical here just to start things off to guarantee that hit because, you know... 15% now will be 150% within 10 shots, so if we are getting the uh, sneak criticals through, that'd be, that's even better. Alright, we should be right just to let it go now. Still getting the sneak criticals. 310, 328, 355, 83, 40, 4, 4, 1. Was it 411 or something? And now we're no longer getting sneak criticals, but... We're quickly getting up to the amount of damage that we were getting pre to this. Where? You're not doing a very good job at threat neut neutralization. You're right there, mate. Okay, I think this robot got uh, it's having a malfunction. It's got a Trojan horse, so I'm just gonna shoot it and get concentrated fire on the case. 550, 557, 6471, 607, 85. Oh. Now, why on earth was I hitting for less damage there? Does concentrated fire reset when you reload? It might, you know. Well, this is a cakewalk, is it? Also, have you noticed how he's like carrying a fire hydrant? It's like he's running around with a massive erection. Like, settle down, mate. Well, that sucked, didn't it? Oh, well, at least the Furious Luger's got it in it to kill it at a reasonably timely matter. But anyways, I think I'm going to cut it there. I think you get the idea of this thing. It's a fairly decent pistol. The uh, requirements to get this thing working is a little bit high, and there are other Luger mods out there that don't require 
all of this excessive extra modding. But if you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description. And if you'd like to see like several different types of Luger mods in your game, just have all the Lugers. You can dual wield them. Like, actually, not yet, but you can pretend that you can and just switch between them as you go to reload them. I don't know. But yep, if you are interested, check out the description. If there's uh, a, a link to Xbox, I'll put one down there. But I'm going to doubt it because, you know, tracking down the extra mods that you require on Xbox would be a pain in the ass, especially on Bethesda's mod browser. It's definitely not the uh, most concise thing in the world. Uh, the Nexus layout is a lot better, and I think what they ought to do uh, in the future, if they ever bring back the uh, mods for the games on consoles, is fixing up that UI, because no. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. I'm out of here.